Jason from Bohemia Bees and we are in the apiary talking about a topic that most beekeepers really like to avoid uh, and that's treating for Varroa mites. There is a big uh, dispute within the beekeeping uh, community that talks about you know whether it be treating no treatment or treating and then when you treat what do you use what shouldn't you use how often you should use it well here at Bohemia Apiary we believe in sustainable beekeeping. A lot of that comes from strong colonies and good genetics. Uh, those key foundations are what's going to give you a strong apiary and it's going to give you prolific colonies that will last, you know, years to come. Uh, it, it, but that's the foundation. You cannot turn a blind eye to the things that are important as well, which are you have mites in your colonies, whether you want to or not. Even in the far reaches of Australia, they've recently found Varroa mites this Varroa destructor in their colonies with their bees and that had never been there for before. So we know now that these mites, the Varroa destructor, uh, is pretty much everywhere. Anywhere there's a bee colony, there's a Varroa mite. It's not about a Varroa mite's existence that's, that's the bad thing for hives and for colonies. It's about the, what they bring with them. So most Varroa mites will transmit diseases to a colony and a Uyghur colony specifically could be susceptible to those diseases, whether it be deformed wing virus or even others uh, that we're not going to list here today and get into, but I'll put them in the description if you're interested in links on reading more about those viruses. Um, we want to make sure that we are trying to keep the, low, the, the mite counts low. So if you have a strong colony with good genetics and, you, and they can somehow mitigate or keep those, light, those mite counts very low in their colony, uh, that's where you're winning. Uh, again, to get zero mites is great, but likely you still have a few mites in your colony. So what we're going to show you today is what we do and one of the steps in the process. We'll do a series of videos on treating uh, as well as, you know, prepping our hives for different types of treatment. Uh, but today we're going to do a, is testing. That to me is the, the most important step in the process. If you don't know you have mites, then how do you know if you need to treat? And to balance the no treatment uh, stance, if you don't have many mites, then maybe you shouldn't treat. You should allow those bees to build a resistance naturally, right? Allow them to try to build a defense naturally and combat the varroa mite. If you just are constantly treating no matter what, even if you don't have a, hard, a large population and the bees were already managing those mites, well, then you're not helping the bees. You're ultimately uh, essentially uh, giving them a, a crutch, so to speak, to lean on. A varroa mite uh, is a pretty nasty pest if I was a bee, that's about the size of a varroa mite. So they're really tiny. Uh, they attach to the fat bodies of the abdomen of the bee. And again, they transmit those, those diseases and they'll, they'll feed on the fat bodies, giving that bee weaker and of course spreading it. Uh, they also replicate or, or uh, you know, grow in a, in a very fast uh, under that capped cell. So what they tend to do is they'll move into those capped cells or right before they're capped, they're capped over. They'll latch onto that larva and they'll start to feed on those fat bodies. They'll uh, also lay multiple eggs within that cell so that once that bee emerges out, there's a, usually a varroa mite or two potentially attached to their body uh, and, in which they will then move to another cell while they're young bees and cleaning those cells. Um, but the others will come out of the cell that were eggs that have hatched out and go into the next cell and the next cell and the next cell. So even if you have a few mites, you could have thousands of mites in the snap of a finger or in a short period of time. So the key is to test, to determine if you have mites. So how do you test? So how we test is we're gonna use a method uh, is the, uh, the wash test. And it used to be called the alcohol wash test. Um, some people use um, a shake test, a sugar shake test, and they found through various papers and research that it's not as effective at dropping these mites off, releasing the mites off the bee. Uh, so they've decided to use alcohol. And alcohol was a very common practice to mix uh, isopropyl alcohol, 70% or greater, in a, in a container like this. You shake uh, about 100 bees or more around that range uh, that you pulled from the brood frames, usually the nurse bees, because they're the ones that typically have the mites on them uh, as they're moving about the, the brood frame. Um, and then you'll see the mite count on the bottom. Well, what uh, recently, uh, they've done some research and there's been some papers that have said that they found a better, um, a better uh, release mechanism other than alcohol, which is Dawn dish soap. So amazingly enough, something that actually is a little bit more affordable to use because we're only mixing about a tablespoon of Dawn dish soap in a gallon of water. 
So one tablespoon into one gallon of water gives you all you need to do all your testing. And if you're going out to the yard, you're not going to need to bring, you know, several containers of isopropyl alcohol, which can get pretty expensive these days. So it's always good to have those alternatives. And they found that the drop rate or the release rate of these off the bee in your shake test, or your, your, your water shake, uh, your wash is a lot more effective. Let's put this together. Let's pull some frames out. Let's test a few. Let's see what we find. We'll show you how we do that. And if we need to treat, we'll show you that in another uh, video. Stay tuned. Okay, so we've got our first colony that we're going to test, this end colony here. Naturally, you wanna use a, a little bit of smoke because you're gonna be disturbing the bees usually on a cool day. And you don't want them to, uh, you wanna be able to uh, get a good reading on these bees. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our colony. And I wanna find a frame of brood, so I'm gonna go middle, loosen up the end one, and the reason I loosen the end one up is so I can pull it out and easily pull the middle brood frame out without the bees, rolling the bees or rolling a queen on that, it's a good resource frame on the outside, I'm going to set that to the side. And I'm going to slide these frames a little bit to the right so I can get a, a brood frame here in the middle to work off of. And I like to find a brood frame that has both capped and uncapped. So as you see right here, I've got a frame with capped and uncapped larvae on it. These are the nurse bees that are working, both young and old nurse bees. So this is a good frame to do. I'm going to look for my queen because I do not want to shake my queen into my test. Double checking. This looks like a good frame. So what I do, is I take one of these nuke boxes that are empty and I'll set it on the hive. And looking for my queen. And that looks to be a good hive, a good frame to use. So we'll take that frame, we'll take my container. This is a new container style from uh, Saracel that we've gotten this year. It's really nice. You can get them for about 20 bucks online and from our store as well. They just be, seem to be a little bit better quality. And then the other ones, they actually seal real good when you, when you close them off. Um, and then you're going to take and put some of your Dawn soap your soap water in your cup you see right here okay we then we're going to take our scoop and I take my frame in my container and I actually shake the frame in here again doing one last check for my queen.
set my frame to the side. And why do I shake them in a box? Because the forager bees will fly out. The nurse bees will not. And then I can scoop in the box all nurse bees. One. And I'll just put a scoop and a half in there. Put my lid on. A little smoke to calm them back down. One minute later. And I just swirl. About a minute. Hopefully releasing any mites. Okay. Okay, so we're looking at our test. As you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe nine Varroa mites. No more than that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maybe one over here is 11, looks like a piece of dirt. It looks like a piece of dirt up here too. So about 11 mites that came off and that's definitely a treatable hive. Okay, so as you saw, we tested these, uh, this colony and there were approximately 11 mites out of a little over 100 bees. So for us, that's a threshold of treatment. You, you wanna treat typically when you see five or more mites in every 100 bees. Uh, that would be 15 mites in 300 is really this, the gold standard of saying, okay, their threshold, anything greater than 15 mites in 300. But if I have a scoop this big of bees, it's about 100 bees in here. And I put about a little over half a scoop, one and a half scoops, only because I wasn't sure that I had a full scoop. So I felt that I got a good unit of measure uh, in my cup and uh, my shake to see how many mites would drop. And seeing just 11 mites uh, is a reason for enough to treat. So. Uh, stay tuned in another video as we show you how we treat a hive um, and what steps are in that process uh, we're going to do. So make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure you follow along, comment if you use a different method to test for your bees for mites uh, and what you do. Uh, but here in Bohemia Apiary, we try different things that work for us uh, in our area and with our colonies to be successful. We like this new uh, approach with the Dawn dish soap inside the water. Um, it's releasing the mites, which is good. So we got a, a good sense of whether we need to treat or not. Uh, and we're not going to treat just to treat. We're going to treat if we need to treat. So remember uh, to continually monitor your colony. Make sure they're healthy. Make sure they have good bee volume, good heavy weight. And going into winter store-wise. Um, and you will have a successful colony that can overwinter. But stay tuned and look for the next video on how we treat this colony with 11 mites. Stay tuned.